It's a pleasure to follow my honourable friend from Bradford West. She's a doughty champion of her constituents, and I think she made the point incredibly powerfully about how taking out deprivation from the way that uh, local government funding is uh, given is absolutely shameless, and it's constituencies like hers and mine that have suffered the brunt of that, so I pay tribute to her for her words. Um, and on that note, Rick and Cleveland, Mr Deputy Speaker, has had raw deal over the last nine years. I've lost count of the number of times that I've stood up here in this chamber to talk about the unfair and the disproportionate cuts that areas like mine have suffered. And as we've said, it's deprived areas that are simply not getting the funding and the support that they need. And it's not just about, you know, we've, we've had a big debate this afternoon about how much money there is in the pot and whose fault it is that there wasn't enough money. But the reality is, it's not just about how much money we've got to go to local government. It's about how it's distributed. And what's been so clear from both um, the evidence that we've heard from my honourable friend for uh, Denton and Reddish, and actually acknowledgement from Conservative MPs as well, is that that funding has been shifted under this government. And it's not, it's been removed from areas that um, have actually uh, you know, been doing, areas that have most needed it, towards areas that have actually been doing fine. And there is a deep, deep unfairness and flaw in the funding system as it stands. Brecon Cleveland has now lost £90 million since 2010. That's £662 per person. That's each of my constituents has lost £662. And you put on top of that, though, the fact they've had to pay more through precepts in social care, precepts in policing, and yet they've still lost 500 police officers, they're still getting worse services. They're paying twice. And my constituents are the poorest. They are, um, you know, we still have um, council tax based on uh, 1991 housing prices. Areas like mine haven't seen house prices rise. The values of their assets haven't, haven't risen. They're still paying a deeply regressive uh, council tax that, that is proportionally much, much tougher for the on them than it is on many others throughout the country. They're paying more through precepts and they're getting less from their services. This simply just isn't fair. So my council has lost a third of its funding. How on earth can it be expected to continue to deliver the kind of standard and service that people want, having lost a third of its funding from central government? And I want to take this moment to pay credit to Sue Jeffrey, who's the leader of the Labour Council in Redcar and Cleveland, that they have continued to do amazing work to defend the most vulnerable, to defend our constituents, and to continue to provide um, fantastic uh, opportunities for people to come to the area, events, um, and they've continued to provide services that many, many people need, and they've done it without leaving behind the most vulnerable. And I pay tribute to them, and I also pay tribute to Amanda Skelton and to all the council staff of Redcar and Cleveland who work so hard. But Reckon Cleveland does struggle. We've got higher uh, levels of deprivation. We've got high levels of child poverty. We've got higher unemployment than the majority of the country. We've got lower health and well-being outcomes. And add to that as a seaside town and a former uh, industrial area, we've got rising uh, demographics for, for an ageing population. And then, of course, you add on top of that an economic shock of the like that we saw in 2015 with the loss of 3,000 jobs in the closure of the steelworks. That is a huge knock-on effect to uh, our local public services and to our local areas. It's not just the personal tragedies, which were devastating for those who lost their jobs, but the knock-on effect to the local area in terms of higher benefit dependency, more insecure, poorly pay, paid work. Um, the average salary of uh, someone who worked at the steelworks has declined by £10,000. Many people had to move away to look for work. The knock-on effect to our local communities, to our high streets and to our town has been devastating. And then, of course, the local authority itself, it lost £10 million in business rates from the closure of the steelworks, on top of the funding cuts that we've already heard. But as I say, despite those funding pressures, our council has continued to do a really good job and I'm incredibly proud of them. They've protected services for the vulnerable, they've kept our libraries and our leisure centres open and they've tried really hard to invest in our towns and in our village centres, in particular focusing on economic development. Eston, for example, has had £2 million in the last two years and there's a further million pound coming for the precinct in Eston. We've had award-winning employment and training hubs established um, that in just uh, 18 months have got 1,000 people into work. Those sprung out of the crisis of the, uh, the, the loss of the steelworks, but it's been an incredibly innovative hub going right into our most deprived communities and bringing together people with who often who never really had a CV before um, to get them the training, the experience and get them into work. It's been groundbreaking, award-winning, and I'm incredibly proud of the work that's been done. And we have future plans going forward to invest £40 million in the regeneration of the iconic Regent Cinema in the seafront and to invest a, a further £95 million to create 4,500 jobs. So our local authority is working hard it's doing its very best and there is a bright future in Redcar but we're doing it locally and we're doing it ourselves and I want to particularly mention social care which of course is the big theme of today and we know 
We know social care is the biggest pressure on local authority spend. In Recker and Cleveland, it's projected that um, over 65, um, over 65 year olds will represent a quarter of our population by 2030. So we have a hugely aging uh, demographic. And while it's fantastic, of course, that people are living longer, but there are greater costs that come with those adults um, who are living longer and children indeed who are living longer with complex needs and conditions. As others have said, it's absolutely ridiculous that we're still waiting for the green paper on social care that's been postponed five times since 2017. There is no vision for the future of social care from this government. It's sorely lacking. and There's a complete vacuum of any sense of strategy and direction from this government on social care. So faced with this vacuum, it is again local leaders who are stepping up and uh, are, are taking up the mantle and trying to deal with this crisis. We've got fantastic innovation in our local area in Redcar and Cleveland, like our new intermediate care centre that will be opening later in the spring, um, specialist support that we've invested in, and of course investing in recovery and independence team, which goes out and supports people in their homes. I'm also very proud of the Care Academy that we've established in Redcar and Cleveland because we know those jobs are underfunded, have a high turnover and have not been sufficiently well valued. But hopefully our Care Academy in Redcar and Cleveland will ensure this important role is highly skilled and valued going forward. So we're using the money that we have. It's not enough, but we're using the money we have to deliver better care for those residents. But this is not a substitute, Mr Deputy Speaker, for proper investment. Unfortunately, inadequate care is meaning that too many uh, family members are having to step up um, and, and step into those caring roles. There are an army out there of unpaid um, family members that we rely on who are, who are um, taking care of their relatives. It's overwhelmingly women. Um, many of these women are having to give up work to do this. It's often older people, as we've heard today as well. There's a huge, huge burden on these people, and we've got to do more to support them to, to look after their loved ones and take the burden away from them. That's where the money should be going, Mr Deputy Speaker. But instead, we've seen in the last few weeks £4 billion spent on no-deal preparations when there's been a complete acknowledgement from the government that actually we were never going to have no deal. It was some crazy, ridiculous pretense at a negotiation. £4 billion. Now, if Labour had won the election in 2017, we would have invested double that into social care. That's what the money in this country should be going on. We'd have brought in, in 2017, a living wage for carers. We'd have ended 15-minute care visits, and we'd have increased carers' allowances. That's exactly the sort of thing that a, a government who cared about um, the many, not the few, would be looking at. And instead, we're wasting it and, and, and uh, frittering it away on this Tory soap opera on Brexit. We, on this side, want to tackle the burning injustices in our communities. We want to help those most in need. And we need a government that's going to invest in social care for the 21st century, which doesn't force elderly people into selling or remortgaging their homes for their care, that supports families to secure the care that their relatives need, that supports those families who are coping with disadvantage and prevents children having to be taken into care. And we need a system which pre preserves dignity and the quality of life in old age. Mr Deputy Speaker, councils are at breaking point, and yet we see Labour councils out there defending the most vulnerable, uh, striving hard for their communities and creating safe and decent places to live. But it's communities like mine that are getting left behind by austerity. We've had enough warm words, Mr Deputy Speaker. We need investment in local government. We need fairness in the distribution. No more austerity, no more cuts.